repentance. Change your ways. A teaching outline. We're doing biblical theology. That is, we read through the scripture, identifying recurring themes, assembling passages dealing with a theme, we analyze and compare those passages, we outline their content, formulating a tentative teaching. We then ask others to assess that teaching, and we share the teaching humbly. First, a definition of repentance. As a noun, it is metanoia, meta meaning change, and noia meaning the mind. This gives a meaning of turning about or conversion. As a verb, metanoeo again is meta change with noeo to think. At one level, it means to change one's mind, but more profoundly, to feel remorse, sorry, to repent, or to be converted. There was repentance in the First Testament. King Solomon said that when his people would go into captivity, they would repent. Repentance is for any man at any time. This included Jerusalemites, Israelite idolaters, Israelite transgressors, and the entire nation. I will judge each of you according to your actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Repent and turn from your sins. Do not let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die? I don't want you to die, says the Sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. There are examples of repentance in the First Testament. Think of Job, a righteous man, Rahab, a pagan woman, Jonah, a prophet of God, the Ninevites, a wicked people, David, a believing king, Ruth, a pagan widow, and Naaman, a pagan soldier. Though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. Naaman turned and went away in a rage, but his officers tried to reason with him. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself, as the man of God had instructed him, and his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child. Then Naaman said, I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other god except the Lord. The Ninevites repented. Jonah began to go through the city one day's walk, and he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. Then the people of Nineveh believed in God, and they called it a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. Jesus later said, The people of Nineveh will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. There are many New Testament examples. Think of Zacchaeus a dishonest taxman, many religious folk, including Galileans turning to God, Judeans who crucified Jesus, Saul called Paul an anti-Christian, 
The thief, who died with Jesus, a convicted felon, and many pagans, idolaters. You turn it away from idols to serve the living and true God. You are looking forwards to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. We know the ministry of John the Baptist. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He said, Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. The crowds, tax collectors, soldiers, said to him, What shall we do? Jesus also preached repentance. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Jesus began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. I tell you, Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. And indeed, people did repent. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with many other words he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. The apostles continued the ministry of repentance. Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. To the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. God commands all people everywhere to repent. They wrote this in their epistles. God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. The Lord is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Now, repent from what? As one turns, he repents to what? Repent from what? The people still refused to repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. They continued to worship demons and idols. They did not repent of their murders or their witchcraft or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Witchcraft, in Greek pharmakon, refers mainly to drugs and potions. Thus one repents from false gods, evil deeds, murders, drugs, immorality, and thefts. Repent unto what? Well, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit.
Repent unto what? To the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus, performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. Godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. Believers, do the works you did at first. The name of God, repent so as to give him glory. Thus one turns and repents unto what? Unto God, unto good deeds, unto faith in Jesus getting baptized, being forgiven, receiving everlasting life. What is the role of repentance for salvation? Well, we must leave our former beliefs and sins, putting our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God forgives us everything we ever did, we get baptized and join a church, God gives to us his indwelling Holy Spirit. We learn to please God by how we live, and when we mess up, we repent and return. And what is the role of repentance and faith in evangelism? In Bible studies, ask readers what they have learned about sin. Then explain how God will forgive those who regret and abandon their sins and beliefs. Recount how Jesus died and rose to life to save forever those who trust in him, offering God's spirit and everlasting life. Then invite them to quit their big sins, to trust in Jesus, and to be baptized. Thank you.